Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for better pasta next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building everyone's favorite Italian video game character who loves jumping and their name ends with an I-O. No, I didn't. Oh no. I've already recorded the intro. I can't change it. Wait, I don't want my ISP getting my search history. I better use today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Look, if you're like me, you've been on the internet a lot recently. Like, a lot, a lot. And if you're even more like me, you hate it when your ISP or search engine takes all your data and sells it to the highest bidder, and then the lowest bidder, and then every other bidder who wants it too. With Surfshark VPN, you can encrypt your data and keep it safe, so your ISP doesn't get it, your search engine doesn't get it, and the hackers, guess what? They don't get it either. If having a paladin of internet protection wasn't enough, Surfshark pushes your streaming options into maximum overdrive, letting you access region-locked content no matter where you are in the world. I'd say that's pretty nifty. Surfshark is giving 2Lock subscribers a very special deal, 83% off and three months free when you sign up with the link in the description. So check it out, get your security on, and stay safe out there, okay? Your papa 2Lock is worried about you. Now back to the video. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to run freely. Climbing up walls, jumping over rooftops, and cowabunging into hay bales in true assassin fashion. Next, we need to study the blade, but more accurately, how to slip it out undetected and ram it through someone's neck. Finally, we need to make sure that even without the blades, we're ready to take on crowds of enemies unarmed. Remember, nobody will notice if there's nobody left to notice. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure that you're as fast and perceptive as an eagle. Dexterity will be number one. Ezio is from the Assassin's Creed games, where you still had to be an assassin, though it will also help us with less stealthy fighting as well. Wisdom after that, you have the eyes of an eagle, figuratively speaking. Though you're pretty good at climbing stuff, getting literal eagle eyes isn't out of the question. Intelligence next, Da Vinci wouldn't work with any dummies, mostly because they couldn't figure out how to use all his wonderful toys. Follow that up with charisma, you're likable enough, especially within your familia. Constitution's a bit low, we're gonna try not to get hit, and we'll be able to run away if we have to, and we'll dump strength. You might use it for climbing checks, but we're actually gonna get something that'll make that kind of unnecessary later. Ezio is a human, but an Aarakocra would actually have eagle eyes instead of just taking the observant feat, so think about that if you want. The observant feat gives you plus one intelligence or wisdom, go for wisdom, plus five passive perception and investigation, and you can read lips. You'll be so good at spotting things, it's almost like you're actually your great 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 grandson looking through your eyes with a video game hut up. Bump your dexterity and your wisdom with your two free points, take athletics for your skill of choice to make up for dumping strength, and the noble background for history and persuasion, you come from a good family. The best of family. Wait, someone's talking smack about your family? Oh, they need to die. You can make them die as a rogue with four skills from the rogue list like perception, acrobatics, stealth, and sleight of hand. If you don't know how those skills could get kills, I'm sorry, you need to be more creative. Rogues get expertise in two of those skills, letting you double your proficiency bonus with those checks. Let's kick things off with sleight of hand to store knives in your sleeves and perception for 22 passive perception at level 1. That's insanely good, but it needs to be if you're spotting corrupt nobles in a crowd from the roof of a church four blocks away. To take those nobles out quickly, sneak attack lets you add a d6 of extra damage to an attack you have advantage on or when you have an ally within five feet of that target. You do have to be using a finesse or a ranged weapon, so good news, you only use finesse and ranged weapons optimal. Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. Be as sneaky as you can be to get in and kill your target in one hit, then run like hell. The honorable way of fighting. To better kill your target in one hit, become an assassin at the third level of rogue, giving you an ability called assassinate. This lets you attack with advantage against creatures that haven't acted in initiative yet, and you automatically critically hit surprise targets. Pair that with 2d6 sneak attack damage, and you can really mash some meatballs. You also get steady aim for advantage on a weapon attack by spending a bonus action, and not moving in the round, but honestly, you're more of a mobile fighter, hit and run. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement. Let's get our dexterity modifier up for sneakier sneaks and slightier hands. By the way, we're just using sleight of hand for the hidden blades. Honestly, they have very little practical differences from daggers or short swords. Actually, you can throw a dagger, so 
daggers are probably better. I think they're just neat flavor. Arm blades are only for Warforged anyway, and are also basically just magical daggers. Now we're gonna bounce over to Monk, because Monks love to bounce. They do that with martial arts, letting you make unarmed attacks that deal 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier and bludgeoning damage, and you can make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you attack with a Monk weapon or unarmed attack with your action. A Monk weapon is any simple weapon without the heavy or two-handed property, or a short sword. I'd use a short sword. If someone survives your assassination attempt, round them off with a kick to the ribs. Now, you can't use martial arts while wearing armor, so it's a good thing that you like flowy assassin robes to rock some unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. In this case, AC stands for armor class, not Assassin's Creed. Sorry if that is confusing. Second level monks get key points. They can spend to do cool assassin stuff like Step of the Wind to dash or disengage as a bonus action, which you could already do for free. But this also doubles your jump distance for the round, so you can use it if you need to clear an alleyway when you're free running. Patient Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action, giving your enemies disadvantage to hit you, and giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws so you don't end up toasted. Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your bonus action. You can hit one target or multiple if you need to do some crowd control. Maybe the best thing about hitting the second level of Monk is unarmored movement, letting you move a little bit faster when you're not wearing armor, and since you can dash as a bonus action every round with cunning action, you'll be cruising through Italy like Costa Cruises. That is an Italian cruise ship company. I looked up for this joke. I don't know the name of of cruise lines off the top of my head. I'm not really rich. Third level monks can choose a martial archetype, and why would I choose anything but Kensei for a dude who has special weapons? You get Kensei weapons, which are simple or martial weapons, without the heavy or two-handed property. Honestly, daggers work just fine. You can make an agile parry, letting you add two to your AC for the round after you make an unarmed attack as part of your action. I would guess your enemies don't expect your forearms to be as hard as steel. Wait, what are you holding? A knife? No! You can also make a Kensei shot, spending a bonus action to add a d4 of damage to your ranged attacks for a round. Whatever Da Vinci is cooking up for you, it's gonna be pretty good. You also get Way of the Brush for calligraphy proficiency, probably the most deadly thing in your arsenal if I'm being honest. Finally, you can deflect missiles, letting you reduce damage from incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level as a reaction, and even toss the ammo back by spending a key point. It would be pretty embarrassing if somebody trained by the legendary League of Assassins got clipped by some guard with a crossbow. He's not even a named character. What's wrong with you? Fourth level monks get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. Can you imagine how satisfying it would be to toss yourself off a building, land your sneak attack, and then dash away? Probably. That's what you do in Assassin's Creed, and I'm assuming that you've played the game if you're watching this video. You can also use this level's ability score improvement to cap off your dexterity modifier, making you as sneaky as you can possibly be. Not really, that's actually still coming, but you'll be sneaky. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action, and up to four attacks with a flurry of blows. Your monk die also bumps up to a d6, so punches and daggers are gonna get a little more damage. Keep in mind you can only use sneak attack once per round, but that kinda makes sense. Nobody is surprised to be stabbed in the back right after they've been stabbed in the back. You also get Stunning Strike, which lets you spend a key point to force a constitution saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and wisdom modifier when you hit a creature with an attack. Failing that, they're stunned until the end of your next turn, which means guaranteed sneak attacks. Here's a good combo for you: Unarmed Stunning Strike sneak attack stab, martial arts attack, and optional flurry of blows. This will give you the agile parry bonus as well. Monk and rogue are a fun combo, everyone. It's probably why we do it so much. Sixth level monks get to fix another issue rogues have, with key empowered strikes and magical kensei weapons, making all of your attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances as long as they are unarmed or using a kensei weapon. Most dudes you kill wouldn't resist non-magical damage in Italy, but they might in D&D. Imagine trying to assassinate a ghost. What a flex. You also get Deft Strikes, letting you add your Monk Die and damage to one attack per round by spending a key point. It's kind of like adding another level of sneak attack for more oomph. Seventh level monks get Evasion, letting you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage on successful ones. If some of your enemies start using bombs, this is a great way to dive out of the way just in time. You also get Stillness of Mind, letting you remove an effect of Charming or Frightening as an action on your turn for someone who base jumps without a parachute on a daily basis. A virtual immunity to fear makes sense. 8th level monks get an ability score improvement or a feat. The Poisoner feat lets you poison your knives really, really well. You can ignore resistance to poison damage, you can slather your sword with poison as a bonus action instead of an action, and you can spend 1 hour and 50 gold worth of materials to make a number of poison doses equal to your proficiency bonus. These doses last for a minute on your sword or piece of ammunition, and force a DC 14 constitution saving throw on creatures you hit, dealing 2d8 poison damage and poisoning them for a round if they fail. The DC is a little low. Personally, I would make it 8 plus your proficiency 
proficiency bonus in either intelligence or wisdom modifier, so this feat can scale better later. But since you can apply the poison as a bonus action and it pops every turn, that's still pretty good. It's probably gonna pop sometime in the next 20 attacks you make. Ninth level monks get unarmored movement improvement, letting you move up walls or over water when you're not wearing armor as long as you land somewhere solid by the end of it. With a Ezio cart double dash from cutting action, you've got 135 feet of movement speed to get you to your perch. Back over to Rogue now, 5th level rogues get Uncanny Dodge, letting you have the damage from an attack as a reaction as long as you can see the source. For a guy as mobile as you are, you actually do a pretty good job of blocking. Your sneak attack also bumps up to 3d6. 6th level rogues get expertise in two more skills. Stealth is a great way to make sure that you don't get caught, and acrobatics is great if someone tries to physically catch you with a grapple check. You've got to be more slippery than al dente linguini if you're going to avoid capture. I know my Italian impression isn't good. Sorry, you had to listen to it a lot. Seventh level rogues get 46 sneak attack damage and nothing else because evasion doesn't stack. But you know, sometimes being an assassin is about patience, waiting for the right opportunity to strike. This is the patient level. So relax, take a deep breath, and walk very, very slowly behind your target. Eighth level rogues get another ability score improvement. Get your wisdom higher for better AC and stunning strike DC. DC, of course, stands for Assassin's Creed. Ninth level assassins get infiltration expertise, which is pretty much like what we got when we hit the seventh level of rogue and got nothing. With this, you can spend seven days of in-game time and 25 gold to establish an alter ego as long as you're not pretending to be someone specific. Why did I say this is basically nothing? Well, Seven days is a lot of downtime in a game. If you're not playing a solo D&D adventure, which I don't think most people do, that means that the rest of the party also has to go on a downtime break while you learn how to pretend to be a dock worker. Also, downtime, at least in my games, generally happens in between campaigns. During a campaign, I want my players to be consistently engaged and feel like they might not have enough time to complete every task they need to if they want to stop the big bad evil guy. So the rogue saying, hey, I want to take a week off to cosplay as a bartender is going to be pretty bad. But the worst part, it can still be seen through if you fudge up the roleplay. Effectively, making it no better than spending an hour with your disguise kit and just trying to make a deception or performance check. It's kind of why a lot of the time when I make an assassin type character, I dip to a different class and stay there, like fighter or monk. But 5d6 sneak attack damage is still good especially with assassinate. 10th level rogues get another ability score improvement, letting you cap off your wisdom modifier for better AC, stunning strike DC, and the highest passive perception ever at 32. You can see through walls at this point. Our capstone is the 11th level of rogue for reliable talent, meaning the lowest you can roll on a skill check you have proficiency with is a 10, and you can still add your ability modifier afterwards. So for all your dexterity skills and perception, that's a 27 minimum. And that's why, we still came back to Rogue, even though I don't like the ninth level ability, because Reliable Talent is really, 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 really good. Also, you get 6d6 sneak attack damage. That's fun. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you are incredibly sneaky, with 27 at your minimum for your stealth checks, meaning that unless you're attacking another assassin with expertise on their perception, you're going to get the critical hit sneak attack. You're also great at getting where you need to go, with extra speed and wall climbing abilities for Monk to help you get the drop on some enemies, and slow fall to stop that drop from hurting you. Finally, your senses are incredibly sharp, with 32 passive perception, meaning nothing's ever going to surprise you. For weaknesses, you got barely over 100 HP, depending on how you're rolled, so there's a reason you need to stick to the rooftops. You're also lacking strength, so you could end up getting tossed around by Wa at CO and his superior athletic abilities. Finally, you've got a level where you basically get nothing because evasion from monk and rogue don't stack, and a level where you get nothing because imposter is bad. But that's fine, be a crewmate instead of the imposter. It's only fun because you get to be better at murder and you're already very good at murder. Fly through the skies, coat your knives in poison, and make yourself an Italian noble shish kebab. Wait, are kebabs Italian food? No, they're not. Well, at least you can land better than most of my jokes do. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.